buying a used car can be a minefield. And one thing you definitely want to be aware of is user modifications or mods that the previous owner has done to the vehicle. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the top five modifications that I avoid like the plague when shopping for a used car. And just a warning, one of them's a little racy. Now the reason I avoid cars with modifications is because it introduces a question mark. You don't know if the previous owner knew what they were doing when they installed stuff or what kind of quality parts they used. So there's always the potential that whatever they did could cause major issues in the future. The first category I want to talk about is engine performance mods. One of the most common is a new intake. And that's basically where the owner took out the air box and some of the air lines and replaced it with a new intake and usually something like a pod filter, which is supposed to be higher airflow, therefore higher horsepower for your engine. The problem with this is that not only can it throw off your air fuel mixture because it's letting in a different amount of air than your stock filter did, which can throw off your computer. Also, the quality of the filter that they're using can vary widely, and a lot of them are really bad at filtering air. So you can get contaminants straight into your engine that will destroy it in the long run. Another thing that can happen is by replacing your intake, you either have to move or actually get rid of your mass airflow sensor, which is a really important sensor for your computer to know how much air is coming into the engine. So you can end up with check engine lights that won't go away or a mass airflow sensor that's not functioning properly because it's been put in a different spot. Another common performance mod I see on engines is like a do-it-yourself electric turbo kit you can get on eBay for super cheap. And these are essentially electric fans that force air into your system like a turbo would, and it's supposed to give you higher performance. The drawbacks to these is they don't actually really work. Plus, they're adding an electrical load on your system, which isn't supposed to be there. And then there's actually a lot of cases where parts break off those cheap fans, get sucked into your engine, and blow up motors. That's like worst case scenario, but they're just no good. You don't want to see one on a car. So where are you going to find one of these suckers? Usually in the top of your engine somewhere, um, around your air hoses. And then there's also usually going to be aftermarket wires that weren't there before that are running to your fuse box here or maybe straight to your battery that don't look like they belong. The next one I avoid is exhaust and muffler modifications. So people put aftermarket mufflers on their cars because it allows a higher rate of flow, which allows the engine to take in more air and create more power. Or sometimes people just want to sound cool or louder. Problem comes when you have cheap mufflers that don't actually do their job. They don't create back pressure for the engine, which it needs to run properly. Um, they're poorly fitting. You can actually get exhaust leaks into the car if the fittings aren't correct. In some states, there's actually legal limits on how loud your car can be. So you may end up with a car with a muffler that you can't even drive and you have to replace. Now, because of this increased flow that an aftermarket muffler might have, it can actually throw off the car's computer because it's messing with the air fuel ratio in your engine. A properly installed high quality muffler can actually do well for your car and make it sound great. But if you don't know who's done the installation and you can't verify the quality of the muffler that's been put on, I would stay away. So how do you know if someone has been messing with the exhaust or the muffler? Well, the easiest way is by the way it sounds. Usually if they're loud or they sound like a race car. Another way to tell is to crawl under here at the end of the exhaust system and find that muffler. A stock muffler is gonna look something like this. Aftermarket ones, they're gonna be smaller generally and usually a little more fancy. So they're gonna be shiny chrome or carbon fiber or the tip's gonna have some kind of chrome thing on it or there's probably a big brand name on the side. Anything like that, it's most likely not stock. The next modification I see is very common and that's an upgraded stereo system. And I'm not talking about just replacing the deck cover on your radio. I'm talking about systems that have big old subwoofers in the back and amp somewhere and all the door speakers are replaced with high-end stuff. The electrical system on your car is actually really sensitive. So if someone puts a stereo system in wrong, they can actually really screw up your electrical. If you're splicing into the wire loom and don't know what you're doing, you can cross wires literally and make your car's computer real confused and real mad at you. One thing a lot of people don't realize is that large sound systems actually draw a ton of power. And so if you're trying to draw all that power off of a normal car system, you're gonna really overtax the battery and the alternator. Additionally, a properly set up sound system will be on separate circuits. But a lot of people just tap into existing circuits and they can overload them. So you'll end up with a car where you're constantly blowing fuses because you're drawing too much power through an existing circuit. You could easily end up with all kinds of electronical problems in your car, maybe even a fire. 
electrical. I did? I don't think that's a word. Number four. Next thing I look for is lifted or lowered cars. Most of the time you see a lift kit, it's on a truck, but on cars, a lot of guys like to lower them. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you click on the subscribe. No, but actually do it. Moving on. Now this is a big red flag because properly lifting or lowering a car can actually be extremely expensive. So a lot of owners like to skip ahead, do the cheap version, which is they'll put spacers in their lift kits so that the car looks lifted, but the suspension is essentially the same. Or in a lowered car, they're just gonna chop something to get it down low, but they're not adjusting anything else. The rule of thumb with lifts is if you're gonna go over two inches of lift, you need to start replacing other elements of the suspension besides just putting spacers in. And if you were to go driving off-road with a suspension like that, you would potentially destroy parts of the suspension system. A good lift can be done by a professional with really good parts, but it's gonna be a lot more expensive. So you just wanna find out from the previous owner what was used and who did the lift. Now the same applies for cars or trucks that have been lowered, right? I mean, if you do it cheap, you're hacking stuff off, you can run into issues of interference with the wheel and the body. Uh, if the suspension wasn't properly modified, you can really damage stuff by just going over bumps. Uh, so it's something that needs to be done properly. So if I see a lowered car, I'm out. Number five, and this isn't a specific modification, but it's more any clue that points to the owner having watched Fast and Furious a few too many times. So we're talking about any modification that's trying to make this car look like a street racer. So that could be racing style steering wheels, fancy shifter knobs, a spoiler wing on the back trunk, anything that screams, I like to go fast and collect speeding tickets. You don't wanna buy a car from someone like that. If you enjoyed this video, you're definitely gonna wanna check out this video we just uploaded on all the things you should be looking for when buying a used car, especially if you don't have much money.